On this week's show, we take you to Chote, bring you to the year's first midday music concert, and go behind the scenes at school meeting. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Aiden Duffy. Hello and welcome to this week's show. All week, Laurentians celebrated the annual Banned Book Week. Books were displayed in Bunn Library to emphasize the importance of the First Amendment that guarantees our right to read and make intellectual choices. There will be no classes this Saturday as the Lawrenceville School community marks Yom Kippur. Rabbi Lauren Levy will host the traditional Break the Fast at her home Saturday evening to commemorate this special day for the Jewish community. On October 17th, the documentary Forgotten Karachi, Pakistan, made by fifth formers Azam Jah Mohammed and Elias Salander, will screen at the AMC Empire in Times Square as part of the All American High School Film Festival. The documentary, focused on education inequality in Pakistan, was made possible by a Wells grant. Fourth former Meg Hillman is 27th on the 2017 Inside Lacrosse Illinois Women's Top 30 Young Gun Junior Rankings list. Hillman earned this prestigious spot after analysis by the magazine staff as well as high school and club coaches. David B. Ottaway, Class of 57, is the recipient of this year's Aldo Leopold Award. The award will be presented Thursday, October 12th in recognition of Ottaway's transformative work in journalism. A two-time Pulitzer Prize finalist, Ottaway is the author of several books on U.S.-Saudi relations. Last Saturday, Lawrenceville's fall athletes were welcomed by 8th school challenger Choate Rosemary Hall. Katherine Kossoff brings us along this memorable day. Lawrenceville's fall athletes woke up early on Saturday, boarded buses, and headed to Choate Rosemary Hall for a day of competition. Our 8th school opponent welcomed us warmly as we took to their beautiful courts, courses, fields, and pools. Big Red fought hard against the wild boars and saw some success and some failure. We played very well today. We had a lot of crisp passes. We did the simple things well, off-ball movement, cutting towards the ball. We had a lot of shots on goal, which tired out their D for sure. And also, we just pounded the cage. We had a 6-0 win, and we played phenomenally, I think. Yeah, we capitalized on our offensive corners and minimal minimized our defensive corners. Um, our goalies got a shutout and that was awesome. And uh, yeah, we were able to get the bench in. The team played really well. There's a lot of intensity and competitive spirit. I mean, it's just tough that we didn't come away with the, the score that we won. Yeah, proud of the guys. And uh, we're just gonna have to take a look at the film and get back after it on Monday. Right now, it's not, it's not as we hoped, but I mean, coming up here was pretty fun. I'm looking forward to doing this in the next coming years. So it's a good idea. Yeah, it was a uh, Good ride up here and got here with plenty of time and uh, I'm ready to support some more big red teams. Overall, it was a memorable day as two schools came together to celebrate teamwork, determination, and school spirit. For L10 News, I'm Katherine Kossoff reporting from Choate Day. Thank you, Katherine. The first midday music concert of the school year was held on Thursday. Andy Nee goes inside the Clark Music Building and brings us this report. I'm here in the Clark Music Center at the conclusion of the first midday music of the year. I had the opportunity to speak with the various performers about their musical experiences. Can you guys tell me how long you've been singing and what drove you to start singing in the first place? Um, I've been singing for six years and I joined the Princeton Girl Choir when, was, when I was little and I really liked it after that. I've been singing for nine years and my mom put me in singing lessons because she thought I was loud and I should use my voice in a more productive manner. <laughs> well, we've been working on the stuff that we've been doing for a long time and it's kind of nice to be able to share that with a bunch of people so that's why I really liked it. Yeah, I agree with Isabel and I feel like it's a way for performers to um, show their classical side because a lot of the performances in high school tend to be pop or improv kind of and midday music is a great way to show um, what your technique and what you've been working on classically. Good job today with the Beethoven Sonatas. Um, I guess the first thing everyone will ask was how long have you guys been playing piano? 
Um, I've been playing for about 10 years already. And I've been playing for about 7 to 8 years. Midday music, uh, I feel, is a great way for people to come out and share the music that they've worked on for a very long time. Um, normally, people who come out to midday music are very talented and spend a lot of time in their discipline. And I think that midday music is just it's great overall. Yeah. Do you have any plans that you'd like to share that, uh, for Midday Music this year and future years? Well, for this year, we are going to have uh, eight series in all. One of them, uh, the February Midday, will be in the chapel. We always have a number of students who are studying on the organ, so that gives them a chance to perform. The Periwig Club is celebrating their 125 seasons, and along with that, we're going to, at the Alumni Weekend, host uh, an alumni concert, which is very much in the spirit of an alumni midday. With an exciting year ahead of us for the Midday Music Concert Series, I'm Andrew Nee in the Clark Music Center. Back to you, Aiden. Thank you, Andy. Every Thursday, Laurentians gather for school meeting to discuss important issues and information on upcoming school events. This week, Senior Features Correspondent Jeremy Huang takes us behind the scenes and gives us a look at how our student leadership team prepares for SMEETING. Right now, we're at our weekly Monday meeting and the process is really just over the weekend and like maybe we'll have people come in before that and ask us to do announcements so we meet up and we kind of decide what kind of announcements are good to go this week based on the time we have if any teachers have announcements and things like that. I think my favorite part about being here is that we get to come up with our most fun and creative ideas for instance like the limbo and like the quiz bowl things that are going to happen during this meeting that we'll implement and then also things in the future like tasty tunes and the lawn party those are probably like where we where we come up with those ideas at this table it's kind of nice to know what everyone's been up to like stuco wise you know what all the other uh, members of stuco have been doing and what they're planning and it's kind of a nice way to be aware because I don't really get to experience meeting the usual way so that's nice what's your personal role in the planning process I'm not very tech savvy, so I don't handle that. That's usually uh, Tiffany and Eric take care of the actual PowerPoint. Uh, so I just advocate for any community service groups that want to make an announcement and make sure that they're getting their fair share of time. Uh, how do they reach out to you to get onto this meeting? Uh, well, when the haiku pages come out, they will have a place to put a proposal for their announcement. Uh, but right now, they can just come to me or Bree or any member of Student Council. I'm here with percussionist Daniel Joseph. Daniel, what are your thoughts going into tomorrow's meeting? Uh, I think it's going to be a really great show. Uh, I hope that our performance goes well. I think we have everything lined up and set to go well, so I think it's going to be a great musical performance. As the technical director of the Kirby Arts Center, I um, am responsible for supervising everything that happens on the stage. And I also work with a team of six Laurentians, two third formers, two fourth formers, and two fifth formers who supervise and run everything during the shows. Uh, are there any troubles that arise during this meeting spontaneously? And how do you deal with those? Uh, live, live anything is always tricky so you never know if a mic's going to go out um, if um, a light's going to die on you you know right on the podium when a speaker's in in town and talking and the light goes dim somebody's got to run up there really quickly and put a new light up or change a fixture or cover it somehow Bree, what are your final thoughts going into this meeting tomorrow tomorrow it's going to be hype and i just hope we don't have to restart the browser Thank you, Jeremy. That is our show for Friday, September 22nd. From all of us here at L10, thank you for watching and have a great week.